Hey there, Larissa from Beekeeping Made Simple. And this video is about different ways you can make money from your bees and honey. <laughs> and if you're just looking for a list of ideas, um, I'll make it easy for you. Right in the description below, I have like bullet points and all of them listed below. But here in this video, I'm gonna talk about the ways that have worked for me. For making an income, I'm gonna talk about ways that commercial apiaries I worked for on a larger scale made an income versus other ways you can do it on a small scale. And as a beginner, maybe even in your first or second year, how you can make some money from beekeeping. Cause it is possible even in your first year you can still produce some income and getting started isn't cheap so it, a great way to offset the cost of beekeeping is to sell some of the products you harvest from your hive now the first way you can make money as a beekeeper is by selling your honey obviously that's a big one and an obvious one but there are different ways that you can do that so you have different honey products you have your liquid honey, um, which you might have different varieties uh, depending on if you're harvesting in the early summer or the late summer, or if you're in a place that has year round beekeeping, you might even have a fall or a winter honey. Um, you also have honeycomb. You also can cream your honey. You can make infusions. You can add rosemary and garlic and infuse those flavors into your honey. Or you can make confections. You can add cacao. You can add ground coffee, cinnamon, vanilla, chili peppers. There are so many things you can add to honey to make a variety of honey products. So as a beekeeper, a small scale, you can sell a variety of these honey products in a variety of sizes, retail or wholesale. What, now I worked for a large honey packing company, and so they're different than beekeepers. They don't have hives, or maybe they have a few, but what they mostly do is they buy honey in bulk, put it into smaller jars, and sell it retail. So a lot of the large beekeeping companies, they don't have really their own label. Most of what they're doing is putting it into barrels, which is over 600 pounds of honey, and they're selling it uh, as a barrel to a honey packing place, or maybe to a beverage company, or um, they might be selling five gallon buckets, which is about 60 pounds of honey to a bakery or a resort or a restaurant. And so, one way when you're thinking about selling your honey you want to think about how you want to sell your honey and what you have usually what your options you're going to be limited with your options if you only have one or two beehives obviously you're not going to be selling a barrel of honey so what you want if you don't have a lot of honey to sell is to think of ways to sell it at a premium cost now that might be adding something like cacao or chili peppers or something to make a confection to make it seem like a specialty product and then you can raise the price of it or if you have a specific blossom honey that your bees are gathering um, maybe you have tupelo or mesquite or here in ha hawaii we have the lehua and the kiave and those are honeys that go at a premium price so you can sell less of it but make more money a uh, honeycomb is what we primarily do here and that also goes for a premium price almost twice as much as what a liquid honey goes for and so if you don't have a lot of honey think of ways that you can make it uh, a little bit um, increase the price of it and if you have a lot of honey then great ways to sell it are to sell it in bulk um, now, when first getting started, if you have enough honey that you can sell to people, even if it is just a few cases, retail, uh, retail like direct to customer is the best way to go. Start with friends and family and bringing it to work if your place of employment allows it. I wouldn't go wholesale until you know that you can fill those large orders because once you get a wholesale account, you don't want to have to cancel it with that store because then it's really hard to get it back a lot harder than getting the wholesale account in the first place. So you have your honey. Um, and if you don't have a lot of honey, another thing you can do is go to a bee farm and actually just buy their honey in bulk 
and fill it. And that's what one farm I worked for did. They had some coffee trees. They had some, they had at one point 130 beehives, um, some macadamia nut trees. But mostly what they did was they bought these products in bulk from farmers down the road and they put it in their packaging. And some people look down on this, but now that I've worked for companies like this, there is no reason to think that this is bad. Now, obviously, don't put on your packaging that all of this comes from our bees or, or you know, make up some fake story. Don't lie to people. But there are a lot of farmers that have a lot of product and they don't know how to sell it. They don't know how to market it. They would rather sell it in bulk for a cheaper than to have to deal with the bottling and the wholesale accounts and all of that stuff. So if you're just getting started and you've managed to get a wholesale account or you're honey selling out and you can't keep up with demand, I would not feel bad about going to another bee farm and seeing if you can buy their honey in bulk in like five gallon buckets or so and bottling it in your bottles. Don't lie to people and tell them that all of this came from your beehives, but there's nothing wrong with doing that. And it's a great way to make a little bit of extra money to help pay for more beekeeping equipment so that you can have more beehives and be able to harvest more honey later on in a few years. So another way that you can um, make a profit as a beekeeper is with your beeswax. You can sell beeswax just solid chunks of beeswax first you want to render it which is how you separate the wax from the honey and the propolis you want to turn it into a solid chunk of wax and not sell the comb and you can sell it just like that uh, there are places you can sell through amazon you can sell through etsy you can sell through ebay um, you could sell at farmers markets you can sell um, through social media or email your friends and family actually um, there is a, a website called uber suggest u-b-e-r-s-u-g-g-e-s-t it, the link is in the show notes and on there you can type in a keyword and you'll see how many people google that keyword uh, so you can if you put in um, buy beeswax or buy beeswax near me or buy beeswax and the city you live in or the state you live in you'll see how many people are searching that and there are actually quite a few people uh, as of when i checked it yesterday that are googling how to buy beeswax so it's it's actually a product that a lot of people look for all you want to do is get one of those molds uh so that you have like a nice mold that says maybe beeswax on it the little you can buy the mold that would make it into one ounce blocks or the one pound blocks in a pinch you can use silicone ice cube trays work really well too you can pour your beeswax into there um and those are that's an easy way to sell your wax but if you want to if you don't have a lot of wax then just like with bulking up your honey to increase the price a way you can do that with wax is in making products out of your wax if you have a lot of wax you can just sell it in blocks but if you don't have a lot of wax you can make candles out of it you can make lotions and other kinds of body products and you can make those beeswax wraps which through that uber suggest you can you'll see that there are a lot of people that Google be buying beeswax wraps. And it's a really popular thing that people want to purchase now. And beeswax wax, for those of you that don't know, it's, it's kind of like um, an alternative to cellophane. It's reusable. You're really just taking fabric and you're dipping it um, in beeswax. You add some jojoba oil and a few other things to it. And, and it's, it's similar to cellophane or a Ziploc bag, except it doesn't it's not doesn't hold liquids or anything um lotions are another really popular one and the price of lotions varies quite a bit it's i mean you'll find some lotions that are very high end and cost a lot of money and some that are considerably cheaper chapstick or lip balm those are is usually the most popular item that everyone wants to buy you can actually add honey and beeswax to your soaps if you want if you make soaps um, I make a psoriasis eczema cream with beeswax in it I make a um, belly butter for women who are pregnant with beeswax in it a healing salve um, it's really endless the different kinds of lotions you can make with beeswax now you don't make as much of a profit with 
the body products because there's a lot that you have to purchase. There's very little beeswax in these products. If you put too much in, your product's going to be really waxy and hard and um, most people want it a little bit more oily so it's smoother to go on their skin. But um, if you don't have a lot of wax, and then that is really the best way to start as a beginner if you're looking to go to a farmer's market or a festival or sell some things to family or just want to make presents for family and friends really and again with the beeswax wraps that doesn't um, require a lot of wax either candles now that's almost pure beeswax and you can buy a candle mold for you know 10 to 20 dollars a lot of beekeeping supply websites have them i made my own candle mold which you can do as well um but it's a little bit more expensive to do that um usually it's about 30 bucks for you to make um one candle mold and i use the umu which is also in the description down below in the show notes and again you can buy beeswax um, you can buy it from a local a farmer in bulk the farm I worked for they actually sold a uh, 30 pound box of it for fairly cheap and then you could use that for body products and candles and you know it's a great it, it's just good to know that you have a backup plan. If you start to run out of product, you can go somewhere else and, and source this material until you have more from your bees. Uh, once you have, you know, some products to sell, a great way to increase that final sale, whether you're doing it at a market or online or through an Etsy shop or whatever, is to make some additional be love products is what I call them. Um, we sell t-shirts like in the one I'm wearing right now. It's plain blue on the front but on the back it's uh, you might be a beekeeper if uh, on the back with a bunch of things that we came up with. My favorite one being you might be a beekeeper if your first pound of honey costs you six hundred dollars. <laughs> but um, you can have be uh, t-shirts with any design you want made uh, on demand they're they're actually printed one by one through a program called printful if you have a shopify website and the link to that is in the description down below you can buy sticker paper or go to a print shop and have a stickers made of um, your logo oh and then there's also propolis so there's not a ton that you can do with propolis some people do buy propolis just straight out but mostly i see tinctures made with propolis and they might be sold as a throat spray or added to some body products um in my opinion uh if you really want that wow factor, the reason why people will buy a body product, adding royal jelly sometimes attracts people's attention. I haven't found that people will buy something because it has propolis in it, or I haven't found that propolis makes people more likely to buy a product. But So I haven't found that it's wor worth it, nor have I found that it makes products better other than the throat spray, which is pretty much just a propolis tincture but it is something that you can play around with if you like now okay so then aside from all of those products you can sell knowledge you can give a beekeeping class I don't recommend this if you're just in your first or second year beekeeping don't don't go making beekeeping classes I mean you can maybe make like a a class at a, at a school where it's just an introduction to bees and beekeeping where you explain like how to get started and the basics of what goes on in the hive and, and things like that. Like a very basic introduction, but don't sell full beekeeping classes until you really know what you're doing. And also you can sell bees. You can sell packages, nucleus hives, or just the queen bee. Usually to start what people do is they sell a nuke and I wouldn't do that your first couple of years either you really want to make sure you have a good stock before you get into that um, which means you know you're you're spending seasons with the bees you're seeing which ones have high mite infestations and which ones seem to manage it fairly well on their own you want to see which ones are aggressive and which ones are a little bit calmer and and start to breed a good stock before you get into selling nukes so that's not a beginner option but 
I, um, once you've gotten going, you can start to sell nukes and those are the easiest to get started with because it's really, you know, just five frames of bees. You have a frame or two of honey and the rest is brood. You want to make sure you have a new young queen in there that's laying, that's healthy and it's stocked with bees. You can buy those wax nuke boxes at Man Lake and uh, that's what I did. It's a little under $10 per box. When I bought them a few years ago, I bought like, you know, a pack of 10 or 20 and, and I just included that extra $10 in the cost. Some people will have like a $20 retainer and when you bring back the box, they give you your $20 back. My bees are not at my home. They are on other people's properties. And so it is not worth the time to schedule for people to come stop by and drop off their new box. I'd rather, you know, if they buy more bees from me, I ask them, if you still have your box and you wanna bring it, I'll take $10 off the price. Also, if people bring their own equipment, their own deep box with frames, um, and lid and bottom board. Well, not the frames. I have, have frames to, for the extra space. If they bring that with them, I'll also take $10 off the price because I didn't have to add in the new box. Packages are a little bit harder because you're shaking the bees in there and you have to cage a queen, but also an, another option. Another way you can make money educating people about bees is to become an influencer. Now this is like a long-term commitment because you're not going to have 100,000 followers on Instagram or a whole bunch of views on your YouTube page immediately. But maybe if you actually already have these accounts going and pretty strong or a lot of followers in other areas, it, it might be a whole lot easier for you. But you can make money educating people online and um, then getting sponsorship from beekeeping supply places or through advertising on YouTube. Some people have podcasts out and they will have a Patreon page and then the listeners can donate whatever they um, can to, to your podcast. And usually you'll offer something for free, like extra special episodes to your patrons uh, as, as a thank you, or maybe you're giving them like a t-shirt or something as a thank you for helping them out and helping to contribute to their podcast. And there is also books. You can create your own ebook uh, for free, self-publish it, and you can sell it through Amazon and you can sell it through Barnes and Noble. Uh, they will make a, a certain percentage of the profit and you make some of the profit. You can even have a book made and you can sell it through Amazon and they will, you can have them fulfill it and you will make some of the profit and they make some of the profit. Now, of course, you have to get it printed. You need a publisher or an ability of yourself to be able to print and create these physical books, but you can also have an ebook made completely on your own and not have to deal with a publisher whatsoever. Now, when it comes to this kind of stuff, you really better be good at marketing or know how to get the word out about this because there are quite a few beekeeping books and there, there's competition among the other, other books out there to be the one that people choose to purchase. After you've been doing it a couple of years, this isn't for the beginner beekeeper, but something that I do and works really well is people pay you to keep bees. <laughs> Um, it, it's something that a lot of people don't realize uh, is, is a way that you can make money as a beekeeper, but especially if you have the time. Um, one of the hotels here pays us to have bees on their property. They already had bees on their property and then the person that did it left and the hives perished. So we came in, brought new bees out there and we go out there every other week and take care of their bees. We also harvest the honey. We harvest it into their jars, put their label on it, and they give their jars of honey out to people that come stay at their place. Um, there are a few companies that are actually a business that do this. There are restaurants, hotels and resorts, schools. There are quite a few places that would 
probably botanical gardens, retreat centers. Um, there are places that would want beehives on their property, but they don't have anyone to take care of them. And it's too much to have somebody on staff that doesn't know anything to get into beekeeping, unless it's something that maybe they're already like thinking about doing on their own. So what you do is you just contact these places and introduce yourself and offer to put bees on their property for you know so much money a month and in exchange they get the honey they get the bragging rights they get the bees they get the free pollination they don't have to do anything um i i didn't go looking for this somebody contacted me about it but if i especially lived in an urban area i would this this would be a great business model you can put bees on the roofs of people's houses some people even just on their personal property would love to have bees but they don't have the time for it they don't want to put the work into it and so they would be willing to pay you to care for the bees if in exchange they're getting most of the honey if not all of it um, some places you can do different kinds of exchanges for the people that don't need bees on their property, um, you know, you're going to have to give them a little bit more to sweeten them up to make it sound like a good deal. But I found especially for the resorts and the restaurants, the people that could really like would love to have that those bragging rights and to be able to give out those little jars. They make um, a really cute little one and a half ounce hexagon jar that is a really sweet little thing that um, some resorts will give to people if they order tea, that little jar of honey, or a restaurant will give to you if you order a cup of tea, and, and things like that they really love. So when bringing it up with some of these places, you know, get one of those jars, fill it up with honey, make a fake little label that just has the hotel logo on it and says honey and stick it on there, take a picture of it and send it to them. It's a great way to, you know, get them thinking about doing something like that. The, and, and the one hotel I was at when we were in the, ho the elevator, you know, they had a poster up of a beekeeper opening up a hive and talking about how they have beehives on their property. So it's a, a really great bragging right for some of these places to be able to tell the people that stay with them how they're helping the environment. Now of course there's pollination services. Here where we are in Hawaii there's a beekeeper like every half of a mile so you don't make money offering pollination services. There are queen breeders everywhere and they're desperate for places to put bees so it nobody's paying for pollination. But in a lot of the United States farmers are pretty desperate to, for beekeepers to bring in their hives for pollination services. And you can get quite a bit of money for this. You can work for an apiary. I got a job interning for a farm. And then after that, I contacted the farm down the road. I asked to be a beekeeper and they said they didn't have any positions open, but they did at their their farm shop which I started working at and it wasn't very long after I was taking care of bees and there was another guy there that was a beekeeper as well he got a job working in the warehouse doing honey packing and within a year he was also out working with bees as well so you might not get a job immediately as a beekeeper for the company but as long as they're aware that you that's where you want to go then you probably get a job shortly thereafter here in Kona queen breeding operations are hiring beekeepers all the time you don't have to know much about bees in order to get a job as a beekeeper there but people don't stay for very long it's very long hours and really hard work and not great pay um and then finally the last way that i've seen people make money as a beekeeper is through well not the last way, but another way is venom therapy. I don't know much about this except for once a woman came to the farm and asked if I would sting her. She had arthritis very badly and so I did. I didn't charge her for that. Once a woman came by, she had Lyme disease and every time they traveled, they had to get like a whole little setup and they would buy bees and keep them inside this container and he would sting her every day. And so I sold them some bees for 50 bucks. 
some people do venom therapy you know they have like the bee house and everything and that is beyond my knowledge but another way to make money and finally the way that the farm i worked for made a lot of money from beekeeping was they just had tours so this is different than education and having classes this was is 10 bucks for an adult i think like seven or eight for a kid and under a certain age was free uh you got a discount if you were a veteran or lived in the state and we would it was an hour long first we had a video that showed the beekeeper out with the hives spinning the honey and doing things that you can't show people daily because you don't spin the honey and bottle honey every single day but um, so they had that little 10 minute video and they gave people a little cookie or something made with their honey and some tea sweetened with their honey. And then we went out to the corral, we called it, and it was 10 beehives that were fenced in, um, just screened though, open on the top and people would stand on the outside and go on the inside, open up a beehive, show people some frames, show them the queen and bees hatching, what brood hunt looks like and what a honey looks like and open up some cells of honey so you can see it dripping down and then we would go in and do a honey sampling and then there was a shop for people to buy a whole bunch of stuff and we would max it at 15 people and it was it was they had three tours a day six days a week and it was it was almost maxed out in, in, during the busy season now this is hawaii so get lots of tourists um and that's definitely going to affect how popular your tours are and they would do free tours for class trips and some other associations but those tours did really well they got a lot of press through the magazines and local newspapers and it was a great source of income until COVID came along. <laughs> so if you maybe don't want to do bee education, that is another way to do like very minimal education and, and reach a wider range of people. Just make sure you have a contract, like something drawn up by a lawyer that people sign. Uh, and the guardian or parents sign on behalf of kids under the age of 18 that says that you understand the risks of being around live bees. Um, if you can get an EpiPen, great, but it's really hard to get an EpiPen if you don't have a doctor, you know, prescribing it for you. Uh, and just understand that there is that risk that people, I will tell you this, people that are highly allergic to bees will stop by. <laughs> and, um, you it's up to you whether you want to allow them on the tour or not but you really just want to make sure that they understand the risks of being around those bees i did those tours for years and there were only a few times that someone was stung and most of the time i was actually by a wasp because the wasps kept on making a nest in the bamboo that fenced off the corral <laughs> um it was very rarely by a bee but still it can happen and so sometimes people just don't even know if they're allergic or they bring their kids and they don't even their kids and they're even stung by a bee so uh, a liability and something to consider but those are a lot of ways you can make money as a beekeeper as a beginner you can buy some honey and wax and start making products and use what little bit you have yourself to start once you get going after a few years you can start teaching you can start selling bees you can start selling honey in bulk and wholesale to stores and um you know when you become a famous youtuber or instagram star let me know and we can you tell me how you did it <laughs> If you have other, other ways that have worked for you, post them in the comments. I'd love to see what you guys are up to and what you're doing. And as for me, I stopped. Um, beekeeping has been my sole source of income for the last couple of years now. Uh, I started with the classes. Classes led to selling nukes because most of the time if you want to take a class and they sell nukes. I started out with the comb honey and I also get paid to take care of bees for that resort. Um, and the combination of those really great brings in a great variety of different sources of income. Getting paid by somebody to take care of their bees is a nice um, base 
that is a reliable source of income. The wholesale accounts where we sell our honey is also great to bring in large chunks of money because you know you're getting paid a lot of money for giving them a whole bunch of cases of honey. And then we have the classes just a few times a year. Now our online classes and the nukes for sale which is more of a seasonal thing and and is just an extra little way to increase our profits during certain times of the year when the bees are busy so if you have any questions leave them in the comments i try to answer all of them and if you want a you know you're a beekeeper if t-shirt check them out at our website uh, that is BeHappyHawaii.com. Link is down in the show notes. We have them in blue and in gray. And we have some kids t-shirts too. Let's say beekeeper in training and some onesies. Check them out. Thanks for watching. Bye.